The world of business is taking a totally different shape. With the rise of digitalization all over the world, people are beginning to understand that there are cheaper ways of doing business. How well a business is responsive to this old world of automation will determine its success or demise. Welcome to Business Matters, where business truly matters. My name is Stephen Ipalabo Lawson. The world is now all about data, technology, connection, and definitely how that impacts on business outlooks and processes. There's so much more we are going to be taking, but then let's have a business update. Hey beautiful, your eyes, your smile are all begging me to take you home tonight. Now reading page three. <laughs> Experience unlimited super fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel, live more. Experts who definitely know their onions have distinguished themselves in their chosen careers through either knowledge or training or exposure to different innovations that has enabled them to be in the top echelon of their industry. Let us have our professional segment. All right, thank you for staying tuned. Joining us in the studio is no other person than the co-founder and managing director of Simfix um, Limited, a multi-talented business strategist and radical reformer with over 12 years' experience as tech premier. He is an alumnus of the Stanford C Transformation Program 2020 um, cohort, and of course, with a degree in electronic engineering from the University of Nigeria, Unsuka. Joining me in the studio is no other person than the managing director and the co-founder of um, Simfix Limited, Mr. Chimezi Hemewulu. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Stephen. It's honor to have you on one of Nigeria's premium program, the NTA Business Matters. And then we are looking at the topic automation and digitization of business processes in Nigeria. And one wonders if this whole thing is so much of rocket science. Or is it um, some kind of policy that is already in, been um, implemented in a in lot of organizations and that itself is impacting on their bottom line positively, sir? Uh, business process automation and digitization is a very simple thing. It's not rocket science. It's actually something that every organization must do and undertake, at least for them to remain a viable going concern. You know, every business has standard things that they do to enable them to offer more value and to be a viable going concern. So this digitization entails using technology to automate those operations and those processes to make it um, more efficient and to improve the quality of service experience they offer to their end customers. Now, for me, it doesn't that seem to be a threat to um, job security, as the case might be, because if machines are taking over our jobs, where do the humans themselves have to be? Uh, well, it is actually not a threat. It's actually a plus, because for almost every organization that we've gone that we've encountered, that, we, that has done um, some good measure of digitization, what we've actually noticed 
is that digitization and automation increases the amount of opportunities available. So the current persons that are in those opportunities will simply be trained to man the new processes. Mm. And in most cases, a lot of job is created in automation because the, the company in itself starts capturing way more value and they start growing in ways that they've not even anticipated. So it actually leads to more job creation, not job losses. We've not encountered a scenario where it led to job loss. Okay, that's good to know because one will wonder if the humans themselves have been doing the jobs well enough. In what way does digitization impact performance and productivity, especially in the office space? Are we going to be seeing the situation whereby cost is minimal or we are looking at a situation where, you know, even the individuals themselves will need to take a lot in terms of getting themselves acclimatized with new digitization processes? Well, the, the reality is this, eh? Automation has the capacity to geometrically affect performance and um, productivity, right? So normal automation, just basic automation, enables your processes to become way more transparent, enable um, increase in employee satisfaction, enables more performance, you know, enables a lot of growth. If you now add digitization to it, what you now have is something a bit more transformational. Mm. radical and exponential growth. Mm. So that's actually what we truly see when we talk of how it affects productivity in organizations. So in your own, in your own professional view, you, you, you will definitely recommend business automation for all businesses, especially in Nigeria, and also government? Yeah, sure. I'll definitely recommend it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a must do. You see, uh, let me explain something, um, Stephen. Pre-COVID, pre-COVID, a lot of businesses are just, you know, simply existing. Let me put it that way. Now, during COVID, there was a lockdown. And in that lockdown, a lot of the businesses that were able to try are businesses that had embraced digitization. Mm. Most of the main services were shut down. So many services were shut down. In that period, we saw a dramatic increase. Some hotels started offering home delivery services because they don't have people coming to sleep in their hotels. And those were the ones that were innovative enough that were able to digitize a lot of their processes to the points that they can offer different kind of service. You know? So in this post-COVID world, what we expect is for almost every organization that is interested in business continuity, any organization that is interested in making reasonable progress, for them to actually embrace digitization. Mm. I'll give you an example. In UNN, as University of Nigeria and Soka, we went there and we took the past 40 years academic record and we digitized it and we set up a process portal for people to be able to apply for their transcripts. Mm. Do you know what we know? Before that period, if you are going to apply for your transcript, you are going to apply manually and you're not sure the university has gotten your, your application request and it, you are not sure the day is going to ship. So your transcript can take anywhere from two months to six months or sometimes it may never even ship at all. Mm. And then the process of payment was also not very transparent. It was manual. But when we came, we automated the process of applying, cleaned it up such that when you apply, you are clear that the university has gotten your application, that they are actually processing it, and that this is, you can actually log in and track where it is in the processing pipeline. Okay? Yes. And then with digitization we did, we looked at the entire hard copy archive, and what did we do? we set up a process to transcribe that document from hard copy to a digital state. Mm. And with that, when you apply for your transcript, behind this, the transcript immediately drops. Somebody immediately processes it. And in the next one or two days, it is shipped. It is dropped in a DHL or FedEx or whatever um, courier service you select, a drop in their bin. Those services come, pick up the script, generate a tracking number, which is uploaded back into the system automatically. And you receive a notification and you start tracking it. Now, that is a lot of transparency. So if you, if you are living in the U.S. or you're living in Australia, you don't need to send a cousin to travel on the dangerous roads that we have to go there and go and apply and probably grease one or two people's palms to be able to make sure it comes out very quickly. No, you don't need all that. The university has so cleaned up the process that all that needs to happen right now is very simple. You just go online, apply, transcript is shipped behind, it downloads immediately and it shifts. Now, do you know the most interesting part of it? The most interesting part of it is that there is a lot of data that exists in that hard copy archive that we have unlocked with this process. Meaning that right now, the university is 
uh, is able to take a lot of data-driven decisions. They're able to determine which courses students pass the most with the trend over the past 40 years. They're able to determine which course students fail the most, the success trend. There are so many trends that they have locked in that data that has been unlocked. So right now, it's no longer with digitization, you don't have a scenario where maybe, for example, a Mr. President asks for uh, maybe the male to female enrollment ratio in, 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 in schools, and then you, it will take you three or four months, or even six months, or even sometimes up to one year to answer that because you need to go out and gather data. But once the digitization has actually occurred, you can answer that question in an instant. Immediately. That's, that's good to know because we know that the new oil is, as a matter of fact, the data. But um, that leads me to my next question, which basically is the digitization of government processes and agencies. And one wonders, is it that the government themselves have not seen that it is important for all of government agencies and processes to be digitized? Or is it that it's the cost itself is what is deterring them? Um, actually, um, this is a very important question, you know, in reality. The question is this. Is it that government, the question you're asking is that government has not seen the need. I think they've seen the need. Is it now a question of cost? I think they have a lot of opportunities, including pro and private public partnership for digitizing a lot of processes. So I think it boils down to maybe having the political will to ensure that the right um, digitization of course, because it is really very beneficial for government. And it's really very, very beneficial for all organizations as a matter of fact. Just imagine a scenario where government can eliminate middlemen from a lot of their processes. Just imagine when they can eliminate doubt from the normal standard processes and um, service offerings. Just imagine when there could be more accountability from the people at the front line, simply because the process does not permit them to even conclude. Imagine that, if, just let me paint this picture. Imagine that to apply for driver's license, that part of the process is that you would have gone through a driving school and the driving school would have accredited you and the only way for you to click on proceed on a driver's license application uh, platform is that the driving school has authorized you to be able to click on that. Just imagine that you are prevented, the system in place prevents you from being able to proceed to the next level until you've done the right thing. So just imagine that. That is what process automation and actual digitization is going to introduce. It's going to introduce a lot of transparency. It's going to eliminate a lot of waste. It's going to eliminate middlemen. It's going to empower citizens to hold the frontline workers accountable. You know, in reality, I think most of the time, the people at the decision-making corridors of power, I think they want to do the right things. I think they are actually, you know, out to ensure that things get done properly. But I think a lot of the times, the issues that we may be facing, maybe we, maybe the issues of the execution with the people in the front line. So with proper digitization, citizens are empowered to hold people in the front line more accountable because the process is now clearer. All right, I'm going to ask you the, the next question, which for me is one of the things that I'm very passionate about. <laughs> because all of this you are making us understand as uh, uh, automation it obviously has its own wide um, benefits. And earlier on, you and I were having a conversation with regards to the issue of cost. Because the cost to automate your business processes must obviously be one a lot of business owners we confront as a decision they have to make. So I wonder what exactly is your take on that? Okay, my take on cost is really very simple. So a lot of the times, organizations focus too much on costs. And they do not focus on the fact that it actually costs way more to do a very cheap uh, or a very um, shoddy, or not to even do um, digitization properly. So let me put it this way. The opportunity cost of not digitizing is mind-boggling. If you look at the volume of allegations and the kind of information or news that we keep hearing these days about mind-boggling issues or abuse of processes in office, these are things that if there was a proper digitized process where you have multi layers of approval, it's easier to checkmate and prevent and not to be hearing it as an afterthought. Mm. So I think the cost, whatever it is, is better to swallow that cost once and for all, digitize the process, and then, you know, ensure that we put up a process that ensures that at least to a very large extent we prevent those issues from coming up instead of having them to deal with. Uh, but you see, one of the things I'm also very passionate about on this program, Business Matters, is because we recognize that the SMEs 
a, a major engine of the economy. But before you answer that, we go on a break. And when we are back, Business Matters continues. Experience unlimited super fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel, live more. All right, Mr. Mr. Emewulu, one of the areas that we are very passionate about on this program is the SME sectors because we realize that they are the engine of any economy and it's quite important. You are a business executive who is running an organization or a company that is obviously focused on automation and definitely on technology and how that can be a tool in improving business processes and vis-a-vis -vis that obviously impacting on profit. What recommendations will you give to SMEs as regards to automation in their business processes? Whether it's an SME that has a staff strength of two or five or ten or beyond that figure, sir. Well, um, for every SME, I'd like them to understand something really very simple. First, automation is about process. So what they really need to do is to at least fundamentally take pen and paper and trace their current process. You know, the current flow of what they do daily to be able to make money. So they need to trace that. And then when they trace it, they need to now find out what are the tasks that they do in a repeated manner which ones are more frequent. They need to document that. Then uh, they need to also look at which of them are very manual and which of them are physically tasking. When they note that down, then they now need to also consider where are the bottlenecks that they're experiencing, which, in which phase of their process is the customer always complaining the most. So when they note all that, then that is actually what would enable them to realize the areas of their core focus in terms of digitization. Because those are the areas, once they are clear on that, then the, now, the next question is now, what are we going to do to be able to ensure that the process becomes a bit more um, controlled, a bit more digital, a bit more repeatable? Because when we are talking of digitization, the idea is that we need the process to be more repeatable. In a reliable way, we need to be able to repeat it consistently and get the same result, or at least predict that we are going to be able to get the right results. Okay? So... They just need to look at internally what are their internal client-facing processes, internal processes that they must automate, and the external processes that they must automate. Oh, this is quite impressive. As a matter of fact, I'm learning a lot because uh, what you've just made me understand is the fact that the, uh, the benefit outweighs the cost in, in, in automation, whether you like it or not. Precisely, this is, this is the way the world is going, as a matter of fact, in terms of a digital business environment. Uh, nobody's going to be dealing so much with analog as the case might be. And then somebody begins to wonder exactly, um, is it that most organizations don't know the importance of data especially in driving business processes? Well, um, I think a lot of organizations know the importance of data. I think because, I mean, how do you run your business if you don't take decisions driven by data? Um, a stunning realization could also be that a lot of people take decisions based on impulse. They don't consult any data. That's to, true. You know, base their decisions on numbers. You know, numbers are spirits. They are ministering spirits. They tell the truth. So you can have your head in the cloud about how good you're doing until you look at the numbers. Mm. The numbers will tell you the hard code truth. It will tell you the reality, explain everything to you. So um, the behind the numbers, to get that number is the data. So you need to have a lot of data, to generate a lot of data in a digital format so that with um, tools like AI and uh, machine learning, you're able to predict what is most likely going to happen, the trend of the market. You're able to predict a lot of things that will enable you to take the right kind of decision to drive the organization forward. Now, in, in your own professional experience, do you think we're doing well as, as a society, as a country, or as a business, as business concerns um, nationally, if you are going to take a ratio of companies who are still operating by old paradigm and companies who are actually operating by the digital paradigm? Well, I think, I think we can do better, right? I think we can do better. 
Um, I don't have a lot of data to pack whether we are doing well or not doing well. But one thing I do think is that we can do better based on what I saw, at least from the COVID lockdown period. So a lot of organizations were locked out of their normal processes, and um, a lot of them actually died. You know, a lot of organizations actually died because they were not very digitized. So I, and they were not also very automated. I think we can actually do better. You know, I think um, most organizations would actually wake up to the new reality. And um, I think the sky is the starting point for most organizations that choose to adopt most of those um, digitization processes. Okay. Yeah, but in, in, in your response, there was a key word that, that, that jumped at me. And that had to do with a lot of businesses actually died during this COVID era. So we, it, it also pinpoints to the questions with regards to business survivor. Um, businesses who actually are digital, uh, who actually have embraced digitalization as their policy, truly, truly survive beyond a lot of this onslaught or crisis. Is that what your point is trying to make? Yes, I, the point I'm also making there is that digitalization makes them more resilient. Okay? okay, it makes them more resilient. It makes them a bit more future proof, and it makes them to be much more continuity, business continuity focused and business continuity. Um, um, open, you know, so digitization makes them more, it makes it easier for them to just not die when, you know, people are not able to move just like we, we had it recently. We would like you as a way of wrapping up to please give advice at the end of the day to these sets of, uh, of, 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 of interest from both the business, small business, the business owner the the government obviously and certainly every other person that is listening well my advice is really very simple um my advice is for everybody to look in words and then um, to look at their various processes find ways of eliminating waste as much as possible if you look at it there's a lot of waste look at your operations look at the process that you use to capture value for your organization there's a lot of um, opportunities for optimization that you may find to so optimize those. If you have an opportunity to introduce technology to be able to do any of the optimization, embrace it irrespective of the cost. Sometimes it appears really very expensive, but it is far more expensive not to even do it in the first instance. And sometimes don't also go for the cheapest solution. Go for the solution that really um, works. And in that process, you're actually going to notice that it pays you to get it right the very first time, instead of to have to pay again over and over to be able to get it right. All organizations to really like embrace the next big thing, which is digitize their processes and ensure that everything just flows. All right, I want to say a big thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Chimeze Mewulu, the MD co-founder of Simfix um, Limited. Uh, this topic, automation and digitization of business processes in Nigeria, is obviously one we cannot exhaust in one whole sitting. But I want to say a big thank you for uh, making a date with us on Business Matters, sir. And uh, definitely we hope to have you some other time. Thank you, Stephen. All right. I'll be very glad to join you at the other time. Thank you so very much. Anyway, viewers, that's so much we can take on our professional segment on Business Matters. Please stay tuned. Business Matters continues. Automation and digitization of business processes offers a manifold of benefits that outweighs the definite cost of implementing such a system in your businesses. Businesses need to position themselves to take advantage of the new normal, which is a direction towards what digital has to offer. This is so much we can bring to you on our program, Business Matters. Please follow us on all our social media platforms. And if you want to see a topic or a subject covered, please reach us. I will definitely consider it. My name remains Stephen Ipalbo Lawson. Until I come your way again, please keep safe 
and ensure you sanitize. Bye-bye for now.